build myself back up. Yeah. I could lose all this shit today. This shit don't mean nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At the end of the day, am I still the same person with the same morals, with the same strong character to pick it up from the ground and start it all over again? Like, yes. Oh, hell yeah. Three, two, one, and we're live. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Jesus. Thank you for joining us. Your host, George Mora, and your new co host. Co host for at the moment. <laughs> temporary co host. Co -host you know, I got to in the, the seat, the, got to in the shoe right now. Our, ca our camera guy, Edwin Chuya. You know what I'm saying? And then we got the camera guy in the back, one of our friends, one of our buddies that we're going to introduce. One of my brothers right there. Come, come through. You, you introduce him. Yeah, this is my boy Jeff. Say what's, what's up, up, Jeff? What's up? Yeah. <laughs> Say what's up. <laughs> Say what's up, yo? So yeah, Chris Christian's gone for uh, a few days. All right, you know he's not missing or anything, not yet. You know, <laughs> but he he went to Florida to do some work. He got I guess he's got to make some money. Right now we're not making any revenue off this. All right, this is totally for free for you guys. Just so you know, just fucking hustling, bro. We're, we're just for the fans. We're, we're, yeah, for we're do fans. we're doing every everything we can do. We're doing it for you guys. All right. And then so you guys could learn. And we're bringing on some fucking dope-ass people, too. Right? Yeah, man. Every, Tell me every, not. Everyone, anyone who we bring here, they're going to share some knowledge about them and about for you guys, too. Exactly. And also, you know what? Everyone's always behind the camera. I think it's a good idea to bring them from behind the camera. Show you what you're all about, who you are, what are you doing. You know, he's you, 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 you're pretty much starting your own business in the last like year and a half. Yeah. Just taking pictures of people. You know, yeah. fucking invested in your in your own camera supply, oh, camera right. equipment. Yeah, man. It's just like at the beginning, you know, every everyone like they be afraid and all that to start. Mm -hmm. But then later on, you, you just get used to it. You get like you get comfortable. So yeah, uh, pretty much my business. Yeah, I like what I do. You know, it, it's a big hobby. What, what made you want to start that? Yeah, man. So you know that saying where like when you hang out with one specific group, yeah, you you, you catch what you, you you gain their hobby. Mm -hmm. So the people who I hang out, they like they serve as photographers, right? Yeah. So I got I got into their hobby too, and then from there, that's when I started taking pictures of them, and then that's when I hit up my friends, you, Diana, everyone else. And then that's how I started. Yo, how how do we how do we even we met through the group? We met through Diane, my my best friend Wilmar. We, you've already seen him. He's been on the show. He's on episode what three? Three, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. One more was on episode three, so definitely go go back and watch that. But yeah, we I don't know. I I I guess I was going through a, a phase where I wanted a more of a group kind of situation, kind of friendship. And then you were already friends with Wilmar. You were friends with Diane. You were friends with Atiri. You were friends with Maria. Yeah, I was right. Friend, yeah, I was friends with them for like almost a year too. Cause yeah, you were partying with them, traveling with them, <laughs> doing a bunch of stupid shit, getting drunk, wasted. <laughs> and, and taking pictures taking pictures too but yeah other than that drunk away so yeah pretty much <laughs> so then so then what made you want to start making money on the side off it well I would, for me it wasn't attention I was making money at first it's just I had people say, hitting me up saying hey this guy wants to, his graduation picture taken hey mm -hmm. this guy wants to take pictures of the event I'm like wow damn I, I, at the beginning I was like damn I don't know if I'm good good enough for this but then later on like you know what let me just do it mm -hmm. so I went to a certain event I went to do a graduation pictures and then yeah i took the picture and then at the end i gave them the, the edited picture and they love it so now like hey you know what i can make money out of this for sure i think i could right yeah so you then, can make fucking money you can make fucking it's yo right now we live in a world where everything is media everything is technology based everybody's got an ego we're all fucking narcissists bro especially in new york city bro all we give a fuck about is money fucking power and you know but we do care about people you know we gotta we gotta grow on the inside but yo we love taking pictures we love being I recorded love why do you think we're doing this you see i had like three cameras right here yeah oh, i got it i just love this it's a, it's a hobby for me and i'm pretty sure they're on my camera kids gonna love it too later well anyways man it's fucking awesome to have you in here all right hey, just to let you know guys, let you know guys this is my first time so if i'm here wally anything like that you know it's first time yo whatever man the anxiety be off the fucking roof you know Smoke a little some some later later some shit you know. <laughs> it, you know my eyes later on too, so you make so comfortable. <laughs> we just we just cut and then and we're just high as fuck, like this guy. <laughs> just fucking all red eyes and shit. All right. Anyways, we have a great guest for you today, ladies and gentlemen. We got a potential UFC fighter, hopefully soon, in one champion. He's got four belts, thirteen and five in less than three years from four different sports, and now he's gonna go pro this fucking year. Guess what? He's also a Davies lookalike, so if y'all like that shit, for all the ladies out there, we got 
Orlando, one shot. Ortega coming in. Ortega. That's literally how they say that. That's fucking, that's fire, man. Yo, thanks for joining us, bro. This is, you know, you, you finally put that the, the headset on. We didn't even do a mic, te- mic check. <laughs> Did it work? Can you hear me? Everything good? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear it. I hear it. Okay. Okay. All right, cool, cool. Yeah. I, I could raise it up if you want me to raise it up. Yeah, we, we, we. Well, anyways, man, thank you for joining us. You know, we already had, we had Sensei the other day, and now we brought you on because I want everybody to really understand what this mixed martial arts life is all about. I want them to know that this isn't like just a fucking... A lot of people think that it's just stupid people, stubborn people, ignorant people going in and just throwing punches at each other. For like money or some shit, you know what I'm saying? So how can I put this? Like, there's people who go into. All right, first of all, nobody's going into a gym and just doing this and trying to act. They go into a gym for a reason. It, whether it's these, whether these people are they're going through a depression at the moment, or these people are just just feeling down or not feeling good about their body at the time, or maybe they're just stressed about life in general. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe they just feel like they want to learn something new. So they go into a gym and then they, they see something that they like and they hear something called Muay Thai or they hear about something called Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or something that they never heard. They heard boxing before. Mm-hmm. They heard about boxing. They heard about wrestling. You get what I'm saying? You can get that at any, basically right now in New York in any mixed martial arts gym you go to, they're going to claim that they know boxing and they can train you boxing because that's the money thing. Yeah. But when it comes to the martial arts aspect of it, that's the difference in Sensei's Academy. You get what I'm saying? Yes. People go in there and they feel like, if, no matter what's going on through their life, you know what I'm saying? You go into that academy and you just feel like you're at home. People sign up to learn something new, but as as at the same time learning something new, mm-hmm. they're building a new family and they're building a new group of friends. And some people, like you said, they, 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 they consider martial artists as the outcast or a little weird or yeah. whatever. But that's what brings everybody together, together. in the gym. Mm-hmm. Because it's, I, yo, realistically, like, listen, I, the first time I ever stepped on a mat was like three, three years ago. That's what I was going to say. You know so, what I'm saying? It was yeah. three years ago. First time I ever stepped on a mat. I know nothing about martial arts, but my entire life I've been fighting. I was, you know, honestly, I was a little badass. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I went to jail when I was, I got, I got arrested when I was 14. I went to jail from 15 to 16 for fighting. Like, I was in school. They locked yeah. me up for fighting. Really? As a you were like in jail in jail? I was in jail, jail. I was in baby prison. You know what, what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like, you know, most, most places is like, yo, you go home on the weekends mm-hmm. or whatever as a juvenile. Nah, I was in baby prison. Upstate New York, an hour away from Albany. It took my mom six hours to come see me. Um, I, I, the first month I was there, I was in my room for uh, 22 hours a day. Because when I first went there, I just didn't know what to do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I didn't know how to adapt to the environment. So I was kind of, mm-hmm. I was bugging out. I'm a kid. Yeah. And I, well, I mean, you're also surrounded by other people who hey, are completely strange to you, you know? Anything from 12 years old to 21. Now, I'm a 15-year-old kid, 21-year-old, their mindset's a lot different. Yeah. They've seen shit. They've seen shit. They've done shit. They know how to survive. I don't. I'm yeah. leaving my mom. I'm like, I want my mommy. Oh, my God. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> like, yo, mom, my God, mom. I'm so hungry. I want a chuleta, please. No. Yeah. <laughs> But yet again, I got I got this dude who's 21 years old about to go to prison because he's doing a life sentence, and they left him in there because he's good. So they left him there until he's 21 because he's good behavior. But secretly, they don't understand that this motherfucker's taking everybody's dinner. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's he's gonna go to big boy jail right after. So he's just like, yo, oh fuck that. Give me a dinner. Or I'm gonna, yo, bro, give me your dinner. <laughs> so my first week there, I got fucked up. I'm not giving you nothing. nothing. I'm not giving you a damn thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not giving you a damn thing. So oh. I got fucked up. I, know, I got beat up. But hey, listen, you still ain't eating my food. But you ate your food. Oh, I ate my food. You Sometimes ate. the food was all over the floor. But Damn. you're not eating my yeah, food. Yeah, my food. That's yeah. it. I got a job in the kitchen. I was good. Oh, you that's good. I came that's home. Good. I did my thing. I became big boss because I worked in the kitchen. So it's like, yeah. I'll give you a brownie for your entire dinner for three days. All right, cool. All right, cool. <laughs> bro, those, brown, those brownies were gold, bro. Those brownies were... Those brownies were worth more than Hennessy. I'm just saying. But my point is this. So it's like when I got on the, when I got on there, I'm, the reason mm-hmm. why I feel like my experience is a lot, not experience, but the reason why I've been so successful in the amateur, in the amateur scene and all that is yeah. because I'm naturally a fighter. And that's the difference from martial artists. I feel like martial artists come in there because of the outcasts, like I was saying. Yeah, back exactly. To, back to my point. So like, like they feel like they're outcasted. Uh, they watch Naruto and, and Dragon Ball Z and people find that weird. He, he fucking loves Which that shit. Really I, I, I love Dragon Ball Z and okay, Naruto. Yo, bro, I'm just getting into it. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, just, I just started watching it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. Like, 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 what I'm saying is this, though. Like, people found it, like, some people would think, like, they'll, yeah, they'll, you're they'll, fucking they'll, weirdo. Like, they'll, like, they'll say little stupid comments or, like, why the fuck you watch Dragon Dude, Ball Dude, why you watch this? Why you watch this Chinese yeah, cartoon? Yeah. First of all, it's not Chinese. It's, it's Japanese. Japanese. It's Japanese. Japanese all right? Anime. Get it together, sweetheart. It's Japanese. But, it's, <laughs> but, but, but for, for, even if that, if they actually gave it a chance and they figured out, they'd be like, mm-hmm. there's a storyline to this that you would actually be, that you'll get into. Interesting. If you gave mm-hmm. it a chance. So that's why I'm saying they go into the gym and then when they get into that gym, other people give them that chance. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, you could be a weirdo, but we're still training yeah. the exact way. We're still way. training the same exact way. And you could be a weirdo, but you might be able to knock me out. Fucking fire. Like, I'm not going to say weirdo. Chris Anders is not a weirdo. Yeah. Okay? But Chris Anders, senpai, he's a fucking, he gave me my first loss ever. Yeah. Oh yeah, Sen- your sensei was talking about this yeah, too. So senpai. Chris Anders Chris is one of one of one of the the fighters in our gym. We call him Senpai. He goes by Senpai. Yes, sir. Crazy with the kicks. Crazy with the taekwondo. Mm-hmm. He's a guy who I mentioned last time. He literally we're, we're sparring. He jumps off the fucking wall, does a spinning kick, hits me right in the fucking face two times, <laughs> mind you. But what I mean is like, they're, they're, like there's people who I see it. Like, yeah, they and, pick and, on and him. he's really into Dragon Ball Z yes, and all this and shit. And they would yeah. pick on him. You get what I'm saying? Not mm-hmm. knowing that motherfucker would kick your, kick your face off, bro. Facts. He'll punch you in your mouth. Like you get what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So that's why I think Sensei's gym is a lot different to other gyms. Gyms. Because it's a family aspect, and he makes sure he makes everybody. He makes sure everybody. That's good. That, he that makes that a point. That's what I preach about striking one on one is that we all are there to take care of each other and build each other and grow each other. You know what I'm saying? In every aspect, not just physically, you know, not just tec- technically, but mentally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I, it's like I came from another gym. I came yeah. From, I, I came from Team Demolition in Brooklyn, and mm-hmm. Sensei opened his his doors to me, open arms like nothing. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate that. And he treated me, he made me feel like family mm-hmm. off the jump. He's put money in my pocket. Yeah. This, so during this whole pandemic, you know, we weren't able to make any kind of income. Everybody's relying off of unemployment. Unemployment mm-hmm. wasn't getting back to me for two months. Sensei said, you know what? I got students in my gym. Let me set something up. Set mm-hmm. up a website. People can, oh, four-time champ. Choose him. Now, all of a sudden, my personal training is like, it's up there, is up there man yeah, i got like three clients a day four I, clients I, a day. I would recommend anybody like to really train with you because i've trained with you yeah, and I, i've been doing it for like three years too but i haven't been doing striking you know yeah. what i'm saying but you, you kind of jump into it but yeah. like the your, your technician and yeah, the way you like it. to learn yeah and and teach people because you can go hard if you want yeah, but you yeah. don't go hard no never and 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 you're one and you're one of the top dogs in the gym so people could be intimidated by watching you but when they're face to face which they do every single class we basically rotate with every single person so we get we get a little like a little taste of what every single style is like yeah, yeah, yeah. and then when, it's so diverse it's so diverse it's so diverse in that gym it's crazy. exactly and then just the, you're always putting the pressure on you're always putting like yeah, not yeah. making feel pe- people uncomfortable but like people like me like i like to train mm-hmm. so like you'll make me feel uncomfortable but you won't like completely sun me yeah, the, no, the entire I'm, time, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm learning, you know what I'm saying? I'm, because you won't learn that way. Exactly, you like, won't. Nobody's going to learn that way just getting, like, pounded on in the gym. Mm-hmm. Nah, I might tap you in your... Uh, matter of fact, I might give you a shot. Might, yeah, you're, might you're good. I punch you in your nose. Mm-hmm. Bing, you might start leaking, but then I'm going to let you know. Your hands are down, keep them up. Exactly. And then the next time that I exactly. throw that, I'm not going to throw it as hard because I already taught you that lesson. But mm-hmm. now I'm like, yo, keep your hands up. This next lesson. That, yes. That, and that, that's, what I, that's what I love about, like, Sensei and... and and he the mentality also, yeah, in which we grow in. Thing. And Diego mm-hmm. does the exact like me and Diego. I feel like that's me. Like mm-hmm. Diego, he's a level above. Me. Yeah, Diego being Dutch, Dutch an, Diego, another yeah, talented yeah. fighter at striking one on one. Um, and then you want to talk about how 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 you basically got in, into striking one on one? Oh yeah, 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 oh, for sure. So <laughs> I, I joined the gym after I fought him. Like yeah, you know, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> he joined the gym I, I joined after the he fought. He joined the gym after me and Diego fought for a New York State title. And yo, bro, that was one of the craziest fights that I've ever had in my life. So it's so fast paced. We have the same style. Um, if you look at the fight, it looks like we were just trying to brawl, but it, it, it's so technical in there. You wouldn't be able to see. Mm-hmm. It. For anybody that wants to watch it, it's uh, you just Google yeah. Orlando versus Ortega no, MMA. No. Orla- Orlando Ortega MMA. Orlando Ortega. And then Ortega all my fight MMA. videos will be there. Yeah, all my exactly. Videos. And then you'll see one where he fights a Dutch or Diego. Diego and- Jagazar. I'll say Diego Jagazar. Diego yeah. Jagazar. And that fight is incredible. It's three rounds of just fast paced, two motherfuckers wailing on each other <laughs> consistently. And you're just looking at round after round after round who's going to win. You hear the commentators like, like yo, I wish there was 10 round fight. Yeah. Like, yes. like we could have went for like yes. two or three rounds. Yeah. It could have been like a five round fight. Yeah. But yeah, so like like even with that, like like Diego, I feel like Dutch, he's one level above me. You get what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like first of all, his experience has been doing this a lot longer, mm-hmm. and he's just more comfortable with his flow. I'm still trying to find myself. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He has his flow. So, like, he's ready for the pros right yeah, now. Yeah, right now. Right now. I would say give me another six months, maybe, like, two or three more fights mm-hmm. in the Amy just to test the waters, and I'm ready for the pros. But, hey, listen. Sensei says I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And- uh, We're going to do it. It is what it is, man. Whatever. So, right now, what are you working? Because I, I know your striking's on point. I know your kicking's on point. Yeah. So, I've been working striking for the past three years. I've been mm-hmm. really working on this striking. Not really groundwork. If I were working any kind of groundwork, it's takedown defense. Yeah. I've, I've seen... I think I've seen you put something in a triangle. Yeah. Or, so, I or, like... And basically, more or less, everything's self-taught. Mm-hmm. Self-taught when it comes to the ground game. I'm just watching fights, seeing what works. I might have learned a couple moves from somebody, but I've never actually took a jujitsu class, or I've never actually took a, a wrestling class, or I've never actually any kind of grappling class. Mm-hmm. I've never taken in my life, but I can survive. I've had it. Yeah. I've, had it I've had MMA fights. I've, I'm three and three in MMA. Mm-hmm. Three of my losses, I have five losses. Three of them are from MMA, and that's because I was facing a jujitsu artist or. A wrestler oh, really? or something like that. Like my first MMA loss, he caught me in an armbar, but I was fucking him up the entire, entire fight. fight. Okay. The entire fight, but I just I, I fucked up. That's crazy. But it's yeah. funny because I don't know if you know this, but the, my first day of striking one, I just love telling the story. I was I was sparring with Ernie my first day, and we we're going level three, whatever. Like we're just going all out. This dude starts hitting me in the face. He starts kneeing me to the chest, and I'm like, yo, fuck this. I take him down, and I'm on t- I get full mount, yeah. and I'm over here wailing on yeah. Ernie, and everybody's like, oh, yeah, what the fuck? It. He's wailing on Ernie. You change the fight with a takedown. Yo, you know, it's right? crazy. You know, that it's guy crazy. doesn't know what to do, how to defend himself on the ground. He's going to get fucked up. He's going to get overwhelmed, and then mm-hmm. it's over. So now what I want to do is, like, I'm going to Jackson and Winks um, MMA. Mm-hmm. Um, and I booked a fight for the 23rd. I'm going to be out there for two weeks. Maybe I might stay, like, an extra week. But um, I'm going out there and I'm working with some top level, high level professionals, Bellator fighters, UFC fighters, one championship fighters. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I'm going to test myself Yeah. when it comes to the ground. Because I know my striking is on point. I don't care what anybody says. Anybody in, anybody in the Northeast region who wants these hands, you get these <laughs> hands. I'm just saying. I'm just Hit me up. At I am one shot. shot. And that's it. Hit me up. But while I'm down there, I'm going to go pro. I want to go pro as a kickboxer. Uh, Muay Thai, boxing, you know, get some mm-hmm. money when it comes. At, for, I'm tired of knocking people out for free. True. So it's like, yo, I might as well make some money out of it. You got to say while I'm working on my ground game. While I'm working on my ground game, perfecting my ground game, I wait for that call. And when that call comes for me to jump into that cage, mm-hmm. I feel bad for the motherfuckers, man. Because my striking is just going to be 10 levels above what it is. And then my groundwork is going to be 55 levels above what it is right now. That's crazy. So are you... Now that now you, I mean, you know you're gonna make a career out of this. I I oh, feel like sure. you're 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 definitely one of those talented people there, and and you have the the mentality and the hustle. Like if yeah. anybody goes on his Instagram every single day, this dude is running miles. Mm. He's he's teaching people. He's he's working on his tech and his, on on your technique, on yeah. your technicality, yeah. and then you're just you're hustling, bro. You're grinding. You're grinding and you're improving every single That's day. A fact. And I've seen that just within the last six months. Yeah. Of or like last year of you coming into the gym, I've yeah, literally. I've been there like I've been only there like six months. Yeah. Six months, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's like, fucking, fucking incredible. But, I mean, you watch, you watch a lot. You watch the you you you've seen UFC fi- uh, two hundred and fifty. Yeah, yeah. You watch, watching, you, you keep yeah. it up. Yeah, I was watching. So like, do you ever watch like, la- like last last week's fight was all like Sean Sean O'Malley like Cody Garbrandt. Those was, that was dope fights, bro. I always say that. Last week was dope. Yesterday mm-hmm. I don't really know about all that, but last week's fight mm-hmm. was Sean O'Malley. It was fucking dope, right? And you're you're what? What's your weight class? Uh, I'm right now in the Amis. I'm fighting at 135, but I know for a fact that I can make the 125 weight. But the, fly weight. Yeah, <laughs> I could be. A, I'll I'll fucking take that belt and fly weight. No no problem, bro. <laughs> what the fuck? Like yo, it's like right now with Sean O'Malley. Mm-hmm. He's like six foot what in the bantamweight division? He's I think he's five eleven. Or is he six? He's months? six foot. I he's think I, I don't know. Even if he's five eleven, even if he's five eleven, he's touching six feet mm-hmm. in the bantamweight division. He's gonna take over, cause his striking is there. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? His kicks are there. His kicks are there. His takedown defense is there. So he, if he does it right, he can take over using his length. Mm-hmm. And what's crazy is that uh, you mentioned it because I'm. I was talking to Diego and I was like, you know, you're on your way to the pros, or you know, you're at that level 
when you start seeing fights and you're like, yo, I'd fuck him that up. up. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah, what, and that's yeah, what I'm yeah. trying to ask. You yes. know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to say. Like, yes. do you ever see yourself now. fighting a Sean O'Malley? Lately. Or, you know? Or lately, fight, lately. Fighting a Cody Cartwright. Bro, lately. Uh, Cole, I'd love to fight Cody, bro. Oh, my <laughs> God. It's like, lately Damn. I've been seeing things. And before, it was like, I used to see pro fighters on the UFC. And I'd be like, oh, my God. I could never see myself in a cage with them. Mm-hmm. And right now, how I've been looking at shit, I'm seeing Sean O'Malley. I think I put up a post and I'm like, I'd fuck him up. I'd have beat the shit out of him. Fuck what you talking about. You'd have been over my neck, on your neck. I'd have been pounding you out. He's talking how he has the most elite striking. It's yes. like every, everything that you just did there, like, yo, bro, I do that in the amateurs and you're doing that shit in, in, in the in pro pros? level and you think that that's the best striking in the world. Fuck that. Connor's left hand is better than mm-hmm. anything you just did. You're talking about you got his one left, left hand. hand. You know what I'm is- saying? fucking monsters bro i'm in a fucking amateur sean o'malley i fuck you up also okay, sean- so, <laughs> fuck you up i'm in the ammies and i'm saying that, <laughs> My best yeah, that. i believe in myself I, I i truly believe in the um um i truly believe in 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 in, in the um and manifesting what you want in life i truly believe that if you if you say it enough and you do something even if it's one thing every day mm-hmm. like say you want to fly right say yo you wake say up you want to fly you're like, i want to fly Motherfucker, you can't fly without wings. You don't, you, you don't got a pilot's license. But I, I'm pretty sure if, if you were that dedicated to flying, mm-hmm. you'd every day in the backyard trying to figure out building something or making something, looking it up every mm-hmm. day. Look up how you make it. Uh, figuring out a way to mechanically build something in order for you to fly. Exactly. You made it happen. Yeah. So, so one of one of the biggest things I pretty much do every single day, which is what you're talking about, is basically manifesting you know, lay, laying down the groundwork or envisioning what you want, right? Life. And then doing it every single day, creating a plan, creating a strategy, which is, in, you know, what you, what you have when you train every single day, right? You have your strategy, you you, you know what you're eating, you know how, how you're recovering, you know what I'm saying? You said, eat, uh, I eat like a piece of shit, but I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying, I am trying, I'm trying. You're going to get there, bro. Uh, you're gonna, I mean, right right now, how, how old are you? I'm 27. You're 27? Yeah. Fuck, all right, so yeah, you got, yeah, so you got yeah, that yeah, good, yeah, metab- yeah. good meta- metabolism, you know what I'm saying? I'm fucking, I'm 24, so I you're fuck, I, I can eat whatever the fuck want, I want, but man. I fucking love, I love eating healthy, I love eating clean good, as it, much bro. as I can. I'm learning now, I'm learning that you don't have to eat to get full, you just have to eat to, you know, feel nourished, you know, so I'm not, my portions are a little smaller. Mm-hmm. Think about, I, I'm not a veggie dude. Yeah. Like, I, lately I haven't eaten a lot of steak and stuff, but just I'm staying away from the pork, I'm staying away from the fried shit, mm-hmm. I'm trying to just start grilling everything, maybe just like brown rice. Do you feel better, like physically? I do. You feel faster? Yeah. Like more up here? Yeah. Yeah. Like I feel like I could run like 20 miles in a day and be all right. Jesus Christ. Like I did eight miles this morning. I'm just like, yo, I'll go do 10 more right now. Oh my fucking God. It feels good, yo. I, Cause yeah. I always see you on the bike too. You're always riding around on the bike pretty much. I make my little money. <laughs> go, just going everywhere. Yeah. I mean, but I cheat. I'm not going to lie. My bike is electric. I used to ride. I used to pedal. I used to be on a pedal bike on a little road, on a little road bike. Mm-hmm. Doing like Uber Eats and stuff, trying to make my money. Because like, yo, listen, the hardest thing that a fighter can do, I mean, the hardest, how can I say, the biggest struggle that a fighter goes through trying to make it as a pro fighter is balancing life, bills, work, and training. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like I did six months trying not to work and just focusing on training and just hustling on the side, you know, making it happen. Yeah. I, can. I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Shit's hard. Shit's, shit's definitely hard. Uh, shit's hard. The way I like, I do it pretty much every morning. I, I I wake up. I like to visualize. Well, like probably in the shower is where I do more of my visualization. Like whatever, the, whatever the fuck you want to call. It. Like I, I see what I'm gonna do throughout the day. Mm-hmm. I see what I want to accomplish throughout the week, and then slowly I'm articulating plans on how I'm gonna get there. Right, budgeting, financing. This is all the shit that I want to teach because I've been I've been doing it for six months, bro. I, you my know, man said budgeting, budgeting, I, budgeting. I need, I need help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm definitely the guy to come yeah, to a budgeting. <laughs> fucking, I've, I've helped. I've helped them out. Um, I can help anybody out pretty much. How to get like um free flights off credit, like building your credit, building your credit. and then getting free flights off your credit through like budgeting, right? Um, because pretty much a cre- like a, there's so many misconceptions about just credit cards in general, right? A lot of people think, oh, like if you have five different credit cards, you're you're you have you're, you're like you're paying so much interest on them, you're. You're in crazy amount of debt, 
And it's like, none of these things are true. It depends on what you do with those. It cards. depends on what you do with those credit cards, how you're utilizing them, yeah. how you're building your credit. And, and one thing that, that um, Sensei brought up the other day is that he, when every time a fighter comes into his gym, right, mm -hmm. he likes to take a little bit of the money that they're, the, of the membership that they're paying. He likes to put it on the side and then he wants to, he wants to build them so that when he's opening up a new gym, you don't have to basically go through the whole financing situation. But what I did tell him, and I did mention, I was like, since this is like a business strategy, and, and I love the way he's investing in his fighters, yeah. is that I would also invest in their in their finances, in their budgeting, teaching them how to like think about, because at the end of the day, it's a business. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you're running a business, you have expenses, and you got bills to pay, like you said, right? So if you have good credit, at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're going to need to go to the bank and you're going to need to get loans. You know what I'm saying? So... One thing for this guy, he had like a 630 credit score. Like 671. 671. 671. Either way, it's a fucking whack-ass credit score. Man. All I told him to do was, yo, listen, all you have to do, open up any credit card you can get approved for, right? Make sure it's a $0 annual fee. Go to credit, download Credit Karma, right? Um, and then just you would, like use your credit card for anything you're going to buy, right? Don't buy, don't buy beyond your means, just regularly, like groceries, like and anything you're going to buy, no matter what, like things you need. Just use it on your credit card. Yeah. Use it on your credit card and then pay it off immediately. There you go. I was yeah. going to say that. I was going to say like with the credit card, like with the whole credit card thing, I have two. Mm -hmm. And I use one just for what I'm going to spend every month, meaning my phone bill. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Food. Food. Um, and I might purchase something once a month on that mm -hmm. credit card. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then I'm not going to pay it right away. That's the thing. Yeah, you, you don't have to pay right yeah, away. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the thing yeah. is that because... I. Some people say like, oh, they don't look at it on a per. Listen, if you pay that right away, they know you have that money. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? And they're looking at it that way. But if you wait a week, as long as you pay it before that, you before you Bef owe it. Exactly before you owe it. If you wait a week, you just use that credit. You didn't have it now. You waited a week and you paid it back. That's what credit is. Exactly. Now, if, if if I swipe my credit card right now, and in ten minutes I put that money and I pay that bill, they know that you had that money. I don't know. Maybe I'm looking at it different. But that's how I look at it. I look at mm -hmm. it like, yo, I give it a week, I give it two weeks, and I pay that money back. But I only use it for phone bill, cable bill, mm -hmm. and for food. That's that credit card. So it's good, yeah. I, and then anything else on the other credit card. But I would rec Yeah, so th it definitely depends on the credit cards that you have. What kind of credit cards you got? Chase. Capital Chase? One, yeah. You have Capital Chase one. Freedom Unlimited? Or you Freedom, I have a Freedom card. Freedom Chase. Unlimited. So what I like to do is the way I, I call this credit card hacking, right? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't really know about this, but the the, cha the the three Chase cards are really good ones to have. Mm -hmm. The the Chase Freedom Unlimited, because when you spend $500, you get $150 back, right? Um, the Chase Freedom, the Chase, um, Saf the Chase Sapphire Preferred card, right? That, when you open that card and you spend, f I think, $4,000 in, in less than three months, mm -hmm. which means pretty much just... I, any anything I buy for, for the next three months, I'm just using that credit card, right? I have I have gas to pay. I got um, you oh, know, yeah, like yeah. yeah I, let's just say I'm buying new furniture. Anything, anything. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like I, I'm gonna put you anything for a Dutch. Boom, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, Pretty much, I, I I I always do that regardless. I never use my debit card. I only use that. I don't like using cash because I'm always getting points, no, right? And these points too. accumulate throughout the years. And, and right your, now and I got account builds up also. Exactly. So when you open that card and you spend um four, I think three or four thousand dollars in the in, in, in three in less than three months, mm -hmm. you get sixty thousand um points immediately from Chase. You can you you can either get yeah, cash back from that. Points. You can right. you can get cash rewards from that. So you can just get straight cash from Chase, or you can use those points to get a free ticket to to flights, any like flights that. any anywhere you want. And then when you're done using that card. You can you can close it Wait, and which it's card is that? that's the Chase Sapphire um preferred. Is that is that the the heavy card? Yeah yeah it's like a, yeah it's like a blue heavy card yeah exactly so it does have an annual fee of one of like I think like a hundred dollars or some shit like that so if you a want year? yeah a year so what you could do is you could just you could literally just use it get your get your rewards and then cancel it if you want to you, you're gonna lose maybe like three points of credit. But you'll get it back later. You can just cancel it. But do you do you need to use those points before you cancel them? Uh, I don't believe so. I'm not. I'm not too sure about that. I would definitely check on that. Now, if you do, now I'll definitely you double do check have on to use those points, though, right? So say mm -hmm. now, here's the thing. I don't know how this affects your credit when you have a credit card, right? So say mm -hmm. you don't use that credit card. You're using your points, and you don't use that credit card for two months. 
Yeah. How does that affect your credit now? Nothing. It it's fine. At all, right? It doesn't. Because you don't you don't have any derogatory marks, you're right? When you when you open up your credit your your credit karma, yes. it checks your credit card utilization as a whole. But if you're not using like if you don't need to use it, you don't have to use the credit card, you know what I'm saying? You can just open up another credit card, keep that like one of my cards, I just I just I like to just open up a card pay like spend whatever money i need to spend on that card get whatever rewards i get off it and then and cancel it i'll either cancel it if it's if there's an annual fee or i'll just leave it on the side and it doesn't affect your and it doesn't account. affect it or i'll use it maybe like depending per, on the credit card that it is i'll maybe use it like once for like gas or some shit mm-hmm. every month or every Wait, like so two if months you, if you open a card use it and then just cancel it that doesn't affect your credit at all it does affect your credit. It, I mean. it, yeah, it, it um, probably deducts like three to five points depending on, on your credit history, but it's right? Serious. But it's nothing serious. Like you can make all those points back in six months. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like unless you, like I wouldn't do that if you're planning on leasing a car in the next six months. So that's where I'm at mm-hmm. with building the credit, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like that's the fastest way to build your credit, right? So it's like you get a car and then say I get a car with a crazy, what my payments are ridiculous, right? For the first six months then I refinance. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? As long as you're making your pay. This is, this is my boy. He owns a company. It's called PTG. Oh, I'm going to put the plug. PTG365. You can All right. follow it on my Instagram. So he owns a... It's a company where they help with your credit and then they lease your car going to your front door or whatever. Mm-hmm. You have zero credit, no credit, bad credit, however yeah. it is. They find you a deal. They might tell you, yo, for three months, I need you to pay this month. After mm-hmm. that, we're going to refinance. You're going to pay this much. Then after that, so that's nine months. On your nine month, your credit score is gonna go up like hundred points, hundred and twenty points, mm-hmm. hundred thirty points. Yeah. And then you're gonna be financing, you're gonna be paying what you're gonna be paying that cheap price for that BMW. You get a new car, BMW. Mm-hmm. You're paying what you were paying for So I I know exactly what you're talking about. Um. I don't know too much about how it works. But yeah, I, I I haven't looked one like OD into that, but I I have I have leased both my cars that I have. I had a, a twenty sixteen Honda Civic. Um, when I just got my license, I just I just leased that. My mom my mom co-signed for me because I had like a, a 700 credit score or whatever. Um, this kid, I just told him exactly what I'm telling you guys now. He went from a 670 to how much right now? Right now, uh, 712, I think, yeah. 712 and what? In like two months. Yeah, guys, take yeah. these advice because what are you saying? It's pure, pure facts, guys. The facts. Oh, I, I did it. Yeah. And so with 20 points, you, you're considered like good, good credit. 20 more points. Right? Yeah. yeah. He, he, what do you wait, 720? Right now, you got good credit. Yeah, me, I, I got, I got, a, I think I'm at six, 765 right now. Okay. So like, yeah, so pretty much if I want to get a house. Perfect credit score, perfect credit score is what, 850? 850. 850, exactly. Get a house right now. Yeah, I can get a, I get a house right now. Yeah. I'll get, I'll get a, I'll get a competitive mortgage and a, and a low interest rate yeah. because my shit's over, over 750. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but right now I'm not, I'm not, li- I'm not, yeah, I'm not maybe looking into that. Maybe when you're 30, buy a house, bro. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I, I am definitely going to get into real estate because I've been watching, um, I follow two YouTube channels, like religiously every single day for like the last year. And these guys were like 10,000. Now they're like a million subscribers. Well, you see, that's the difference between you and normal people in life. They wake up in the morning and they're fucking watching TV or eating cereal. Exactly, bro. I used to be that. I used to be that motherfucker. But, it, but you wake up in the morning and you do something that's going to help you in life, bro. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, bro. Facts. Like me. What's going to help me in life? What I want to do? Get the fuck up and go run. Exactly. So that's all my That's my only fucking obligation. Get the fuck up. Go run. Go train. Go do what you got to exactly. do. Go make sure that you're ready for that next fight. Now, somebody who wants to do real estate, get up. Go look on YouTube yeah. for some inspirational videos from an entrepreneur that has $2 billion yeah. in his bank account mm-hmm. and figure out how he did it. Exactly. You know so like I mean? that, and that's the thing is that I watched two people, one guy called, uh, meet Kevin, right? Uh-huh. He literally, he does daily vlogs every single day about everything that he's doing. He's, he's, a, he, him, he's a real estate agent. He's setting out the truth. He's setting out exactly what he does and he puts it out to the public. He's been doing it for like a year and a half. He and does he's doing this it for free, right? Daily for free. That's who you listen for to. For free. But that's who you listen to. But he does have a course and his course is super expensive, but he has it. He's, he's worked on it. content out yeah, for free that's going to help you. Exactly. That's so, who you listen to. And, and that's, why, that's why I listen he to him listens, every single yes. day. You know what I'm saying? I haven't bought his content yet, mm-hmm. but everything he's told me has helped me. You know what I'm saying? But Graham stuff too. Maybe you should try to invest in it and maybe you should see because there might be some secrets in there. There are. There are. You no, there, 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 maybe there are. He's giving, you some, mm-hmm. he's giving you some knowledge, but he might be holding something back for. He, he is. He is because it's, it's for his content. Mm-hmm. It, every, everything that he's. Every, every any any paywall that he does, it's perceived value later on in life. So if you spend a thousand dollars on his course, right, you may make you're you're gonna make a, you're gonna save yourself so much money through real estate through that real estate course, you're because you, because he's already experienced it. He's already taken the loss. He's already taken the L. He learned from it. 
and and now he's putting it he's putting it out there so you can save your money at the same time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like at the end of the day, he's not just he's not he's not just some guy going up there being like, oh, buy my course. He has a year's worth of shit. If you want to sit down, he started selling. His yeah, course. and if you want to sit down and binge on all his videos, you can. You're gonna learn so you get so much knowledge off that, which is what which is what I've done. You know what I'm saying? Which is why I'm, I'm able to like, um, I, I built up my credit score. I can like take pretty much free flights yeah, to like anywhere I want. But like, yo, I'm grinding. I don't even I don't even have time to take a vacation, bro. Like, dude, I I've been doing fucking. When I started my mixed martial arts, I did taekwondo and i had a full-time job as a bartender then i took uh, jujitsu stand the fuck up my god i didn't know you was a bartender like, oh, i got a whole fucking bar right I there the bartender. I, I got fucking shakers i'm a tins, bartender by shakes. trade man. i've been bartending since i was 18 years old in jfk <laughs> that's why i was a bartender when i was 19 in yeah. midtown manhattan i tried to get a job at jfk they were Yo, like fuck no bro, <laughs> like you're too young oh my god God, what? At 19? Mm -hmm. I got a job at 18 years old. Well, I started as a server. Bro. Dude, I look like I'm fuck. I would look like I'm fucking 13, bro. They don't yo, bro, fucking know me. Yo, bro, at 18 <laughs> years old, I was making a thousand a week in tips. That's crazy. At 18, a thousand a week. That's crazy. Tips. Then I would see like 300 dollars because they took the taxes out from. My oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, my yeah, check yeah. on Friday. So think about that though. 1300 dollars a week as a as a 18 year old kid. That's crazy. I mean, I was still paying rent and shit. I left my mom when I was yeah. 17, but. When when I was nineteen, I was still living with my mom. I I just moved out this like uh, what like three three months ago, like oh, yeah? in February. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fucking congrats, bro. Fucking as long thank as you. Out, I know motherfuckers who's thirty four still living at home. I know, bro. So that that was the thing with me and um bartending from now from when I was from when I was nineteen. When I when I was nineteen, um bartending, pretty much, like, j it was just weird. Like I was making a thousand dollars every week. I was working five days a week. And this was after taxes because I got like a thousand three hundred, thousand three hundred, and then and taxes takes away like week. three, four hundred dollars yeah. away. And now, and I was making that much, dude. So I was balling, bro. So for like from when I was nineteen to twenty one, I would just spend all my money. I would take take this girl on fucking like the the, the, the best know. restaurants I could go you to. Want a yacht? Let's go. Like, <laughs> like, I'm pretty be a rapper, pretty but much, I but yo, I'm gonna spend right now. Yo, I depleted myself, and I looked at everybody around me, and I'm like, yo, all these people that are thirty years old that I'm working with, right? They're still doing this shit. And I'm like, why are they still doing this shit, bro? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm oh like, oh my god, that's you know? how I looked at it too, bro. That's, that's how you're gonna look at it, bro. I'm like, bro, you're 40 and you're still bartending here. Why? Yes, why? Why? I'm why? like, because that motherfucker didn't say it. Because that dude didn't wake up every single day. And he, now we have free made, education, bro. No, bro, he made three hundred dollars in a night, and then he went to the bar and he spent two hundred, and then he'll go home. And in his mind, he's like, I'm gonna make three hundred tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then he went home mm -hmm. and then spent another two hundred. Now facts, he has two hundred dollars. Or for me, the biggest expense was the fucking Ubers, bro. The Ubers you would take from work and then and out back and, and back and yeah, forth, yeah, back yeah, and yeah, forth. Yeah, that should adds yeah, up yeah, every yeah, month. Nice. See, but it, money. What? It's like that night you just made money, you just spent it. Like, you just spent it. And you just that, spent and yo, I'm not gonna lie. When I first started, that's how I was. When I first started bartending, mm -hmm. it's like, holy shit, bro, I made three hundred and fifty fucking dollars and I only worked six hours today. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes. I'm like, yo, where we at? We at the bar, drinks on me. And then I go home and I have a hundred bucks and my girl's like, yo. And I tell my girl, yo, I made two hundred dollars. And she goes and she's like, Yo, can I get some money to go to the store, get some milk for the baby? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, it's in my, it's in my, it's in my pocket. This is what made me realize. Yes. She, and then she went in my pocket, and I had sixty-seven dollars. I had sixty-seven dollars in my pocket when I had hit her up before I came home and told her I made three hundred and fifty. dollars no, I made three hundred and fifty that night. Yeah. And I had sixty-seven dollars in my pocket, and she came and threw that shit in my face, and she was like, "Yo, this is what I mean, blah blah blah." I lost my daughter's like I'm gonna say I'm gonna say everything. Mm -hmm. I lost my daughter's mom. I lost my daughter and all that because mm -hmm. I was young and I was making so much money. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was the shit. You That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I thought I was the shit. And I thought that, you know what I'm saying? She's always going to be there. Don't worry. I'm going to take care of the bills. I was taking care of the bills. Mm -hmm. But it's like, yo, you're making a shit ton of money. I should be bowling. I should have bags. I should, have, I should look good. Your daughter yeah. should look good. Not just getting by. Exactly. So when you get that money, you got to learn how to save. That's Like and this man says, you got to budget, bro. I lost the family budget. over that. You know what I'm saying? When I was young. Now I'm 27 years old. Shit's normalized. Me and my daughter's relationship is amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing, bro. Me and my daughter's relationship relationship is amazing. That's my best friend. Now I'm going to New Mexico in a couple of weeks. I'm trying to start a new life. I'm trying to build this pro career. I'm gonna be back and forth, and hopefully, everything works out where I'll be able to own that home for my child and mm -hmm. make up for the fuck ups that I the did. The fuck ups that you did. You know back then. Because I wasn't financially smart enough mm -hmm. to save enough money. To exactly. Where, to where my girl, my baby mother, will feel confident enough 
to maybe like let things go like all right he's holding us down mm -hmm. it's like yo he's a little kid which is good yeah. no it's but good now, it's how you feel I understand, bro and i know and it's like i would never have another kid until i really until i find out and i know that i'm financially mm -hmm. stable i'm mature enough to take care of that child and do everything that i need to do and not be immature and just throw my money away rather than stacking and building for the future i get it 100 you know I mean? that dude that's 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 the kind of mentality that i like preach every single day is literally to just and that's the only reason why i'm doing this bro. Mm -hmm. i don't want to work a nine to five you don't, no, we don't, I don't, I don't want to. Work I, I don't recommend anybody working unless that's unless that's your dream that's job. That's your dude. That's your thing. Man. And the, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right. No, work that nine to five, bro. You want to be a police five, officer. You, 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 your whole life, you wanted to be a police officer, mm -hmm. or you wanted to be a lawyer your entire life, or you wanted to be a doctor, or you you, mm -hmm. you always wanted to be a contractor or something like that. Go ahead and do that. Exactly. But if that's not what you're gonna do, do not go to college. Don't spend your money on college. If there's not one thing that you want to do, you you take your time, you figure it out, bro. Because at the end of the day, all you're gonna be do is wasting time, not money, but you're giving up your time or your family. You're giving up your time in life to make someone else rich. Facts. Period. Take that time. Take a loss for a year. Take a loss for two years. But if you believe in yourself later on in life, it'll all pay off, bro. And then you'll have the time to chill at home and do what you do, as long as you, like I say financially fucking smart you exactly. save your money and you budget and you do what you gotta do in a couple of years you'll be able to buy that car you'll be able to do that you'll be able to do this which is why I'm fighting right now fuck that I would never be able to buy my daughter a house if I was working as a bartender for the rest of my life I might be able to buy myself Facts. a house because we both know we make money as bartenders yeah. we make money as bartenders mm -hmm. it's a little no, it's a little secret you know what I'm saying but you could be a hundred thousand dollar bartender exactly. you know what I'm saying like that's the goal the goal is to be a hundred thousand dollar bartender, bartender. If I talk to somebody that goes to be a hundred thousand dollar bartender, you're making a hundred thousand a year as a fucking bartender, mm -hmm. working like six hours a day, and having fun, drinking, chilling, making other people happy, making a hundred thousand a year. But that's not my dream. Yeah. That might be something hey, cool to do that. But you can make a hundred in a year, or I can do something that'll make me a hundred in two weeks. In two weeks, exactly. Well what you could well what you're doing, what I see that you're doing is that you're investing and you're investing in yourself right now, yes. right? You're you're working on yourself so that I'm taking in, losses. Taking losses in five years, you're gonna be ready. You know what I'm saying? Like now, people are gonna start paying you because this platform, UFC, one championship, they're time. getting bigger, bro. But it takes time. You're right. In five exactly. Years, in five years. In five, it's not gonna happen right now. It's not gonna. It's not gonna happen like that. It's not gonna happen now. It's not gonna happen mm -hmm. next year. It's not gonna happen a year after that. I have to put myself out there exactly. and I have to take losses for years, man. Jorge Masvidal, bro, been doing this shit for 16 years. This is my best fucking example I can say. He's been doing this shit for 16 years. He turned pro 16 years ago. He is right now just getting the money, money that he deserved. That he should have earned 16 years ago, more or less. Right Pretty now, much. bro. And they still don't want to pay him the money. He gave up a fight right now for the title because he's like, fuck yeah, you're not paying me enough. You're not paying me enough. Mm-hmm. But the biggest, the, also the biggest thing for anybody that's a nine to five, for anybody that can relate to it, is pretty oh, no much no judgment. First, of yeah, all. yeah, yeah, no judgment. But if you are doing that and you're not really happy with it, get a side hustle, bro. Do the side hustle. Something you know what I'm saying? You like to something do. you like to because do. That might become your main income. Exactly. Bro. That's what I, I mean, did. A photographer, right? Yeah, yeah. You got a nine to five. Uh, not at the moment. Whatever. He's a server. He was a, he was a server. He worked in the restaurant industry. But your right, your regular thing is a server. That's mm -hmm. who you are, right? Yeah. Okay. So now, if you're a server. But yet again, you start photography, you're doing photography on the side, then you're realizing like, oh shit, I'm making like 120, 130 in a shift. And it's like, okay, but I just charged him $100 for to do an hour. For an hour shoot. Pictures for an hour. It's like, maybe if I focus more on getting more $100 shoots, mm -hmm. I don't need this shit because I exactly. can wake up at three exactly. in the afternoon. And what he was doing for a whole year, free shoots. Yeah. He was doing free but shoots, so he, do it. so he builds yeah. the clientele. Do it. And I then do, guess I do free what? Free personal training too. Exactly. You do free personal training. Like cool. You like training with me? You know what I'm saying? Now you know, it's thirty dollars for thirty. Now minutes. it's thirty dollars for thirty minutes. You know what I'm saying? Now you're you know the value I'm providing you with, and my time is valuable, yes. just as your time is valuable, right? That's why I sat here. I learned. I I googled who's the best jujitsu coach in all of New York City. Mm -hmm. Vitor Shaolin came up. I was like, cool. He's That's three going. blocks away from me, right? Boom. Trained with him for, for two years. Got my blue belt and everything. I didn't care about paying $220 every month. You know what I'm saying? For me, for me, it was worth it because I'm like, yo, all the knowledge and the value I'm getting from this dude, he's a legend. Yeah. Like, why, why wouldn't like I me. pay it? I'm trying to figure out who's the, what's the world's best gym right now, and I'm just mm -hmm. looking at it like, okay. So 
Jackson and Wink has John Jones, which is the number one motherfucking fighter in the world, and he's been he's defended his world title fucking how many times? Eight times? Whatever. He's defended. John Jones it. is a beast. John Jones is a beast. A beast. That's a, you he just say. gets in trouble, bro. Whatever. Okay, cool. Then they got Mike Perry out there too, right? Mike mm-hmm. Perry's a fucking beast. He may not be like top fighter or whatever. You may not not yeah, Mike Perry. You may not know who he is. Some people may not know who he is. He's a fucking beast. Holly Holmes. Holly Holmes. As a female. A female. A fucking beast. Beast fighter. Karate hottie, bro. Oh, Michelle, Michelle, Michelle Karate Michelle Hattie. Watterson. Michelle, take, oh. She's mm-hmm. coming out, she's coming out of Jackson and Wayne. They have beasts over there, bro. So oh, that's, that's where I'm going to go. go. Because I'm going to test myself against them. Because I know I'm going to train with John Jones at least once while mm-hmm. I'm there. I may, be, I may not train with him every day because, bro, it's, John, it's John Jones, bro. Yeah, like, you know, whatever. But I know I'm going to get some work with him at least one time. And I'm going to purchase, I don't care. I'm going to shoot my shot. I'm not going to stay quiet. I'm going to let Greg Jackson know and everybody over there. I want to fucking spar John Jones. Jones. I don't care if he's six foot whatever, 200. I don't care. I want to spar John Jones because I want to see where my level is at. Yeah. I know he's going to beat me. Of course, bro. It's John Jones. But at the end of the day, I want to test myself. At the end of the day, you were in the fucking cage with the best the ever. Best and you've thing. learned something. You've taken something so from being with the best ever. So I'm learning something. And then ever. the content. Think about it. I got a video of me sparring John Jones. Like, John on, Jones? If you know how many people are going to follow me after that? Like, whatever the situation may be. But at the end of the day, like you say, you go to him because you feel like he's the best when it comes to the ground. Mm-hmm. So with everybody else, whatever it is you want to do, whether you want to be a pastry chef, when you want to fucking sell cars, you want to fucking make cupcakes, search who's the best one at doing that. You know, when it comes to the business sense of it, mm-hmm. not the taste of your fucking cupcakes, because it's people who they'll buy it just because it's like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know a couple of people who, you know, they sell some shit called God gas, God's gas. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and the only reason why people want to buy it is because it's called God's, God's gas. gas. The brand, like Jungle Boys. That's it. It's branding. Because it's the exact same thing that you're going to get from somebody else called Snugger Booger or whatever the hell it's called, bro. It's the mm-hmm. same exact product, but it's the name. It's the name. It's the same way with Gucci. Like Louie, you know same what I'm saying? You're building it. And that's with LMS. Shout out to LMS. LMS, 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 Last Man NYC. Standing. Um, so it's a new it's a new clothing company that my boy Doug and my boy Ernie and my boy Ernie, which are two fighters out of the gym, they're starting up, but they have the right mindset. You're not buying my product because you like how it looks. It could have cost me five dollars to make every t shirt and I charge you seventy five. Fuck that. It doesn't matter what it costs me. I'm the plug. You're mm-hmm. not buying it because of the... Yeah, I'm going to always make sure my quality is good. But you're not buying it for the quality. You're buying it because you want to be known. You want to be seen wearing LMS. It's like everybody else doesn't give a fuck how the shit looks. It'd be ugly as hell. Yeah. But they want to wear Yeezys. Yeezys. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say that right now. But because it's called Yeezys. Yeezys. Exactly. These are ugly, bro. Exactly. Right? There's like two pairs that I see that are like dope. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The black, the black mesh ones. I don't even know the name of the 350. I think. I, I think so. The black 350 ones, uh, so, yeah, boots shits, or whatever. Yeah, and yeah. then the gray, blue, and green. Those are the only ones that I feel like are okay. Mm-hmm. Talking to the mic real quick. You, you, no, oh, into, into the mic. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So <laughs> I, f- I feel like it's the same thing. Like when it comes to LMS and when it comes to Gucci, what's the difference except that they've been out longer and you know what they are? I'm gonna make you know what the fuck LMS is. Exactly. I'll make you know. And if you're not gonna buy it for forty five dollars. Somebody else, Somebody else will. will. Somebody else will. And th- and that's your clientele at the end of the day. And that's like and a, that's good, a good business mentality. Exactly. That's who you want. You don't want those exactly. people who's going to ask you, damn, bro, you can't exactly. give me a, a discount. Nah, bro. Because nah. what if I feel like my name is up there now and I say, you know what? Fuck it. My shirts are 75 now. Mm-hmm. You'll never buy one, bro. Like, it's, shit. I, I learned that from working in the in like the like one of the best Indian restaurants, the most fine dining restaurants in New York City. They don't do... We were all like, you know, when you walk into a restaurant, right? Mm-hmm. You get a menu and you pick the plates that you want, right? Mm-hmm. You walk into this restaurant. It is a three course menu. They're telling you you want this. This is a this is a three course menu. You have to spend seventy five dollars when you sit down, and okay? you're gonna get this. That's it. And and you 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 choose the, the three the three plates that you want, but it has to be three plates per person. You cannot sit down and say I want one thing. And we, and say I want one thing. Get the fuck out of here. Literally no. turned everybody away. Guess if what? If you sit down on that table, you're spending seventy five. Oh, that's it. Guess, and dude, guess what? They made all their money back within the first year, bro. And they were packed every day. Packed every single but day. But you want to know why? Every single day. They were why? limited. Oh, you want to know why? Why? Because they were confident in their shit. And they the told you straight up, you're OD paying confident. 75 for turn around. And most people would be like, ooh, they're charging 75. It must be good. Mm-hmm. What? 
Facts. This is the city, bro. This is like, the city. <laughs> I'll go fry up some chuletas right now and charge eighteen dollars a chuleta, my nigga. And when I spend two dollars for the whole pack, I'm telling you, my chuleta is freaking worth eighteen dollars. It's, it's the name behind it. It's definitely the name behind That's it. Dude. Crazy. That's crazy. It's the name behind. It. It's the same thing with this show right now. Jesus, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like you don't. We even, not even know right now, and but not even fucking. About not even known is you don't even know what this podcast is gonna be, but you're mm-hmm. gonna invest your time in watching it because you feel like, because you know. That at some point in this podcast, there's going to be some shit that you're interested in. You're going to drop some knowledge Dude. or something that can help you in life. Or you're going to laugh. If exactly. not, sips tea or, or Henny. <laughs> sips tea. Or, or the best part is what I like is, is they're going to watch our growth and they're going to learn from it, right? Mm-hmm. Right now, today, you know what I'm saying? You're not even a pro fighter yet. Yeah. A year later, we bring you back on the podcast. You're a pro fighter. You got mad belts under you, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm gonna put them shits right here, right? Here. <laughs> so, I mean, one next to the skull, a whole different one mentality. Next to Mama Guevitz, you know, that's it. <laughs> so you know, we're 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 laying down, we're laying down the stepping stones to building our foundation, you yeah, know. And I appreciate it, man, because at the end of the day, any content for me is good content, whether it's bad, whether it's not. You might, you guys might look at me right now and be like, "Oh, this guy is a fucking asshole." <laughs> but hey, at the end of the day, you called me an asshole, so you know my name. Exactly. You know like, exactly. <laughs> exactly, bro. Exactly. It is what it is. It is what it is. And I'm here to help you guys as well. So, like, if this thing pops off for me, hopefully, you know, everything goes good. I know USC is the goal for everybody in the U.S., mm-hmm. but, like, my mindset's a lot different. And my sensei made my mindset a lot different. And now I'm on some shit where I want to make it to one championship because they build heroes. And they build heroes. And their fans look at each other, at their fighters as heroes and role models rather than motherfuckers who's in there just brawling. Dude, I, I think one championship has a crazy fuck. It's gonna have a crazy reach. No, a lot of people know about it. This already. is what I this is it what I didn't does. this is what I didn't even know about it until Sensei brought it. Uh-huh. Since, since he brought it up. That they're doing different style fights every card. Oh, you didn't know that? I didn't know that. Oh, I was just about to no, bring it up. I was, just, like, I was just about to bring it up. I'm like, I love one championship because it's like I can go there, I can get a kickboxing kickbox championship fight. belt. And then the next time I fight, it could be for an MMA belt. And yeah. then the next time I fight, it could be for boxing. Boxing belt. Or a Muay Thai belt. You got know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. I'm sorry. I, I injured myself. Look up there, bro. Just, it's all I'm good. trying to make sure it's okay before I leave. Um, so, like, that's what I'm interested in. Because, mm-hmm. it's like, how many people do you know is a multi-sport Type. world champion? Not, not like, oh, I'm a, world t- I'm a world champion in two different weight divisions. Cool. I could be a kickboxing champion at 135 mm-hmm. and 125. But then I could become a Muay, uh, a Muay Thai champion at 125, 135, and then a MMA champion at 125, 135. 135. There would be nobody else in Six the world. Six belt time holder, bro. There would be nobody else in the world that would have what I have. Now I take that platform, right? Come back to the U.S. I'm a six-time world champion in one championship. It's now being advertised in the U.S. It's getting bigger in the U.S. How are my motherfucking sponsors? How much are they going to pay me, bro? And I think that's the difference between my mindset Thanks. and everybody else. I Thanks. think my mind, my mindset is more on sponsors and mm-hmm. movies. I want to do movies. I want to I want to get sponsored by Nike and like these things. Other people want to be the greatest fighter in the world. Yeah, you want to make content. You want to make valuable shit. I want to make valuable shit. I want I want to I, I yeah fuck that. I want to be considered the greatest fighter in the world. But if not, hey, cool. My bank is okay. <laughs> and it's like and it's like that. You get what I'm saying? It's like I don't have to be the best fighter in the world. I fuck you up, bro. <laughs> fuck. And I'm gonna use this platform to make sure that it's not even for me, bro. So I, I'm not exactly. gonna I'm not gonna make my main my brain mush and be in that cage for freaking ten years. I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna get my money. I'm gonna invest it, and I'm gonna get out. The only reason why I'm doing this is to make sure that when I go, my daughter has something to start off with. Because mm-hmm. I feel like in New York, the biggest problem that parents have with their children is not giving them the pla- giving them something to start with. They're putting True. them out into the world and like figure the shit the fuck out. So so for me monetary or materialistic shit for if i had a kid i wouldn't give him any of that shit no, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be i'll be like yo listen there's like, gonna be a bank account with yeah you, you yeah not even bro i'll be uh, i'd, I'd be, I, I, uh, me yeah i would be like you know you, you got food on your coat you got food in your belly you got clothes on your back you got you got a place to stay uh-huh. you know what i'm saying yeah but I, you need to work on your mentality. There you know you what I'm saying? You, you you can't be in the house not doing shit, you know, not finding some oh, kind of way of to make money. Not. You know what I'm but saying? But you see, that right like, there is the, that what you just said mm-hmm. is the normal New York mom, dad mentality. No, no, no. There, see, and let me explain why. Let me explain right. why. Because you just said, you said, I'm going to give you the normal. I'm going to give you what you need. I'm going to give you food. I'm going to mm-hmm. give you water. I'm going to give you clothes on your back mm-hmm. and a roof to stay. And then now you have to learn how to 
do it and you have to learn how to get your own you have well, no no they're gonna learn but they're gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna teach them i'm gonna yes. show them you know i'm gonna show them how i did it you know what i'm yes, saying create a platform you know the same platform i use what's hey, the no 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 now you gotta put in the work do you feel like leaving your child a business to start off with and making a mature decision whether to sell or make it work as a start off to getting things done on their own do you think that that's the right thing to do or do you think that that's enabling them so um i would think see like if, if i were to just leave them a whole business but they don't know how to run that business yes. they don't know about that business at, through a business expense anybody who's employed in that business they're gonna be like why am i gonna look at this person you know what i'm saying you yeah. you because you, you now you got com- now you got compri- uh, compromised leadership right this yeah. person has just been handed something yeah. that they don't really know how to run you know yeah. what i'm saying and is ba- that and is that person's um is that person's job to make sure that they find yes. somebody to hire. Because exactly. at the end of the day, if you're an owner of a company, you're not there every day. Yeah, you're not there every day. That's the reason you're the owner. Mm-hmm. The reason you're the owner because you don't want to work every day. Well, so no, no. I mean, I mean, somebody you, you, that they're going to respect. I would recommend to definitely be there every single If you're the owner of that company, it if, depends, you, if you're the owner of multiple companies, yeah, if you're the owner of multiple companies, obviously you can't be there you got it but you have to be you have to be some kind of face everybody okay. in that place needs saying. to kind of know you I, I you know what i'm saying, saying. I get what you're saying. but okay so now this so you're the only company you're there every day mm-hmm. right and now you're like okay you give the business to your child right and then everybody knows that that's your child mm-hmm. so yes the respect aspect be like yeah you were just giving this shit like who are you he's exactly. not telling you to do it, right exactly. so now at the end of the day this is the reason why you're giving your child this because you're teaching mm-hmm. them a lesson so let's just say let's just say i i own a restaurant right yeah and i and this is a, a really big restaurant and maybe i want to move to something else would i leave my child the restaurant knowing that they don't really know anything about the restaurant industry would you? with employees no i'd I be would. like i would i would th- th- i would but listen this, this is the way i would do it i would go about it i'd be like one right i'd be like <laughs> I, I would i would be like hey work as a polisher for, for for a month, you know what I'm saying? Learn it up. Learn it yeah, all the yeah, way up, you know what I'm saying? The way yeah, I did it. Yeah, that way yeah, everybody yeah. in that place, when I leave that to you, respects you, you know but what I'm saying? But not even that, because if they don't respect them, they get fucking fired. That's it. She is the owner, you do what you mm-hmm. want. Or he is the owner, you do what you want and you make it work. And if it fails, there goes your first life lesson. And now mm-hmm. it's time for you to make it work after that. I gave yeah. you that platform to start off with. Exactly. I gave you a boost. If you don't make that work, that's yours, mama. I'm going to make sure I have my business on the side. You ain't exactly. getting this one. But I gave you that platform to start off with, and I didn't kick you, I didn't kick you on your ass and say start from zero. Mm-hmm. Because I, I look at it like I wouldn't be doing my job if I had her start from zero. I'm sorry, bro. Some people look at it different, mm-hmm. but I feel like a helping hand mm-hmm. makes all the difference. Everybody, yeah. no matter how much of a hustler you are, Everybody needs that a help. Hell yeah, hand, yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, one thousand percent. So one thousand percent. Donald Trump. Fuck you, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's my opinion. It's me, Orlando. My opinion. Fuck Trump. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Hey, fuck Trump. Fuck hey. Trump. But look, um, hit the way he started his shit up. He got a loan from his pops for a million dollars. Hmm. Oh, my dad gave me a small loan of a million dollars. Yeah, like he said a small loan. A small loan. He got that helping hand. If he'd ever had that million dollars, he wouldn't be Donald Trump. So I'm gonna tell you that right now. If I'll, Donald Trump didn't get that million dollars from his dad, mm-hmm. he wouldn't be Donald Trump. So yeah, he's a piece of shit. You don't like him, whatever. Yeah. But do you want your your child to be financially up there like Donald Trump is? Hell yeah. I mean, I do. Like he, financially, the the difference between like like finan- like for, with ta- Don, the Don Trump and the one million dollars and like a small loan and all this stuff is like when people don't really understand like like you need to I've spent a lot of time really studying the million dollar mentality right okay. Okay. and how and how they're able to like invest and 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 how you like if if you can't budget a hundred dollars how do you expect to budget ten thousand right. dollars how do you expect to budget one million dollars right? Right. right at the end of the day yeah he might have been given that but his his um. You can learn something from everybody, right? I'm not, I'm not a Trump supporter. I don't fucking tr- support Trump. But at the end of the day, that dude no, makes no, no, no. so much money. I, financially, financially, yeah, yeah. financially, Trump is the goat. Yeah, but yeah, fuck but, Trump and his views and what he does yeah, with his yeah. company. But financially, when it comes to finances, fuck what he believes in. Yeah. He's the goat, bro. He, but he makes all his money off other people hating him, off all the controversy. You know what I'm saying? Same reason Takashi Six Nine is big because he's a mass marketer and people and just and, and people embracing the hate, makes bro. Them watch him exactly. And and like you said, you know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, you may hate me, you may call me an asshole, but you still my you still know my name. Yeah. And that's why he's getting all that money. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So 
do I, and and at the end of the day, he keeps on doing it. He's been doing this shit for fifty fucking years. You know what I'm saying? And he used the presidency. Being the same, he used the presidency as his biggest platform. Being the same be dude. An asshole, so yeah. if if you if you if you ask me, you tell me, oh, would he be where he's at even if he didn't get the one million dollars? I'd be like, yes, bro, because he'd be this the same asshole. Nope, I don't he'd be doing so. the same shit. He'd be if he'd we be, if we look up right now what his first business adventure was, the investment was at least seven hundred thousand. Probably. So without that million dollars, he wouldn't Probably. have. He wouldn't. He literally wouldn't have been who but he is. But did he today. go bankrupt? Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. He gone bankrupt like three or four times. Three or but four he, times. But he calls. But that's a financial strategy. You know that, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. Well, he, he wasn't bankrupt. It's it's. He had all that shit cash in his crib. Probably. Yeah. Had, probably. He probably. had millions of dollars in his house. Probably. Sitting but, under a bed. And he but, was like, hey, I have zero. Here's something <laughs> here's something you probably don't know, bro, is that every person that's a that that that's a millionaire, yeah. they've gone bankrupt at least one or three times in their lifetime. Oh, you know I what know I'm saying? that fifty cent just claimed bankruptcy. Yeah. And then two hours later he posted up a hundred thousand in cash. Bruh. Bro, I understand it, you man. You know what I'm saying? When you, you know what I'm saying? When when you fail, you learn, bro. Like that. That's the biggest. That's the biggest thing, bro. You know what I, I look at it like when you're up to that status where it's time to claim bankruptcy, yo, mm-hmm. boy, you big balling. Like people look at it like fuck shit. If I gotta claim bankruptcy, yo, I just ordered a Bugatti. I didn't pay for it. Uh, I got a house. <laughs> I got a house. I didn't pay, pay for, for it. it. I just bought a jet. I didn't pay, pay for, for it. it. I got three hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry on me. I ain't pay for it. And guess what? Bankruptcy. I don't gotta pay for shit. <laughs> and you start all over. And now your credit, now people who want to sell you a car, they're going to sell you a car because they're like, damn, how much money you got that you that you claim bankruptcy? Mm-hmm. Shit, you know what? You're fucking here. Crazy, that, that's, You start Crazy. over, bro. Mm-hmm. You start over. Start over. And, and, and that's my biggest thing is with my child is that when, they, when everything else goes to shit, right? Are you still the same character? Are you still the same? Do you still have the same strong mental fortitude to start all over again from shit? Wait, you, you said, know what you I'm saying? said when shit hits the fan? When shit hits the fan. So you, if, you, do you feel if like you, shit's going to hit the fan? If, yo, I feel like, I, dude, the way I train, I like putting myself in uncomfortable situations because I, I like to thrive in uncomfortable situations. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. I like to feel comfortable in uncomfortable situations. Yeah. So I'm okay with failing. You know, I look forward to failing so that I could learn and build myself back up. I could lose all this shit today. This shit don't mean nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At the end of the day, am I still the same person with the same morals, with the same strong character to pick it up from the ground and start it all over again? Like, yes. Oh, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. That's I'm, the difference I'm gonna between you and the regular motherfucking Joe on the street. Exactly. I don't care. Fuck it. I got to start over. Hey, let's start over. Most people, most people be like, oh, oh my fuck. God, bro. And it's like, I bet, let's do it. Let's I'm just getting my nine to five again. You know I'm, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna yeah, go, I'm gonna go bartend for a little bit. I'm gonna stack up some bread. Do that and too. Like, and like six more months, fuck you. Try it again. And then I'm gonna try it again. And then if it doesn't work, guess what? I'm back to bartending for six <laughs> more months. I'm gonna stack up some bread. And then I'm gonna try it again, Ten. bro. You just gotta keep that mentality. Exactly. Just, just keep it going, exactly. bro. Exactly. But well, you gotta, well, one of the biggest quotes of Conor McGregor said is like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta, Improvise, adapt, and overcome. My man said Conor McGregor. I'm looking at motherfucking. <laughs> I'm looking at this nigga. What's his name? Um, I yeah, he's crazy. He's that's that shows you. I don't look up to nobody because I don't even remember this motherfucker's name. <laughs> All right, I look up to my motherfucking self. <laughs> his name is Cejudo. That's it. <laughs> Henry Cejudo. Henry Cejudo. <laughs> Henry Cejudo. Yo, Jeff, you kind of look like Henry Cejudo. Hey, he bit. definitely does. Like, yo, come, yeah, come on the camera. Come on the camera. Definitely look like Henry Cejudo. He yo, we like need to do like a zoom in on this Henry motherfucker. He look like Henry Cejudo. Yeah. So, he said there's three things that you need to know to succeed. He sent a message to one of my boys. He's a fighter out of New York. He's now training with American Top Team out in Florida. His name is um, Tornado Novato. All right? Fucking beast. Every fight I've ever seen him, he knocked him out. Every fight I've ever seen this dude have, he knocked him out. He got a personal message from Henry Cejudo. Like, dude sent him a video. And he said three things in order to make it happen in life, in order to be that UFC fighter that you want to be. Mm-hmm. Is determination. Um, is it... Oh, fuck. Determination. Determination. Something else. I'm not, I'm not going to quote because I don't know. But then he emphasized on sacrifice. Now, he said sacrifice about 15 fucking times. Okay. And now the reason I, I, how I'm looking at it is because like, yo, bro, how many fighters do you know have women who don't want them to leave the state? How many fighters do you know have women that are stopping? Oh, stay home with me tonight. Ah, mm-hmm. Don't go train or True. whatever or job. You know what I'm Facts. saying? Or maybe you have to leave your child for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You might not be able to see your daughter for three months because you're in Thailand getting some work in and putting mm-hmm. your name out there. You know what I'm saying? So 
I look at it like as long as you sacrifice right now, whatever mm-hmm. it is, it may fucking hurt. Like, it may, yo, bro, yo, I, me with my daughter, holy shit. So, like, I'm going to Jackson week for three weeks. Yeah. And that's just killing me right now, bro. Like, oh my God. I tell my daughter every day, like, mommy, you know I'm leaving. Bro, my. And she's like, I know, dad. And I'm crazy, just like, yo, ah. But the sacrifice, the sacrifice. The sacrifice. Anything in life, finance, mm-hmm. um, profession, your, your profession fucking your family in order to make that thing work you gotta sacrifice exactly. if you have a woman in your house who is not your daughter's mom or you have a dude in your house who is not your daughter or your son's dad you have to sacrifice certain things in order to make that shit work mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying but you're you know uh, my cousin he hasn't been able to see his son for like four months now due, to, with, due with to this whole corona. thing yeah, exactly too. so yeah. so FaceTime bro you know he's FaceTime his kid every single day for yeah. hours playing whatever games he's gonna play he's gonna it's all right. Checky, checky, checky. <laughs> check, 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 check. Well, well, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like he, he, he puts in time every single day to still bond with his son, to still some find time. He puts time in with the people he cares about, you know. And at the end of the day, that's just gonna build his relationship with his son. He's not neglecting his kid, you know. He he has to do what he's got to do, but he still finds time to spend time with his kid. Now we live in this beautiful age where we got social media, FaceTime, where we can always yeah, FaceTime, yeah. always record, always be with our loved ones, you know. Yeah. And so, that's, that's what I've been on with my daughter. Like, we FaceTime every day, but it's, it's, yo, bro, it's not the same. It's not the same. This pandemic, this pandemic had made things, like, a lot harder for people who are not in their child's life every single day. But you make it work, and you do what you got to do. That's it. All right. Perfect, man. Yo, thank you for joining us today, Orlando, bro. Yes, Orlando, one shot Ortega. Ortega. Please, bro. <laughs> thank you for joining us, man. I, I can't wait to have you back. And when you're either you're back from Jacksonville or no, I'm, I'm, your I'm next going to New event. Mexico in Albuquerque. I'm going to New Mexico. With New Mexico and Albuquerque, yo, bro. Yeah. Whenever you want, bro. Whenever if you have a message to say any anything, anybody out there, you know, you can just say it right now. Yeah, you know well, what I'm saying? Uh, 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 fucking follow me uh, <laughs> at I am one shot on Instagram and just follow my journey, man. Um, I know a lot of people doesn't don't put their life on social media, but I'm gonna let you know everything that I go through in life, whether it's training, whether it's my daughter, whether it's me smoking a spliff, whether it's me drinking Hennessy, or eating a fucking grilled chicken and veggie. Um, ins- inspirational fucking shit. Whatever it is, man, just follow my journey, bro. Because I will tell you that, yo, just give me two years, man. And in two years, I will be where I, I believe I'm going to be. And you're going to be paying to watch me, I promise. I believe that. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. Definitely. Yes, sir. Jesus. Thank you guys. Mama Guevits. Leave a like and subscribe <laughs> down below if you like everything we said. You know, you know, please don't say anything we said personal. Yo, right? but but can Fuck we get it. a Mama Guevits on three? One, <laughs> One two, two, three. three. Mama, Mama Guevits. You heard? <laughs> All right. Later.